In this video, I'll show you my method for cutting a simple dovetail joint with woodworking hand tools. Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth. Welcome to my traditional woodworking school here in Earliesville, Virginia. In my last video, I compared hand cut dovetails with using a dovetail jig and power router. In that video, I promised that I would share my next tutorial uh, on how I cut dovetails with hand tools. So in this video, you'll get to see my method. And just so you know, not all these steps are absolutely necessary for cutting dovetails. If you've seen my video with Frank Klaus cutting dovetails, then you'll know that many of these steps aren't necessary. Dovetails can be a lot faster with fewer steps. However, for beginners, I found that these steps will help you learn to be more accurate and uniform with your dovetail cutting. And once you've mastered this method, then you can certainly move away from a structured dovetail process like this and cut more by feel, just like Frank Klaus. So before I begin, let me just show you a finished dovetail joint so you aren't confused. This half of the joint has tails. The tails are the pattern for the pin board. Pins on the interior are simply called pins, but pins on the outer edges are called half pins. And the joint just fits together like this. A dovetail joint is a very strong and attractive joint that holds two boards together. The tools I'll be using for cutting dovetails are a dovetail saw, a crosscut saw, a couple of chisels, a bubble square, a coping saw, a marking gauge, a combination square, a joiner's mallet, a pair of dividers, a marking knife, and a pencil. See below this video for a list of tools that I use here in this video. All right, let's cut some dovetails. The first thing I do when cutting dovetails by hand is to use a marking gauge to lay out a baseline. I set my marking gauge cutter to just barely hang over the edge of the board. This will allow my dovetail joints, tails, and pins to protrude a little bit so I don't have to hand plane the whole board. I mark all ends of the boards. Just make sure that all of your boards are square so that your layout lines will be accurate. In my next video, I'll show you my method for squaring up boards with power tools. I've already posted a video and article on how I square up my lumber with hand tools, which you can find the link to below this video. I also use a fine tipped pencil to darken my cutting gauge lines so I can see them better. Next, uh, I place one of my boards in my workbench vise to lay out the tails. There's no rule for how far in to measure your half pins, but one easy method is to eyeball half the thickness of your board with a combination square or dividers and make a tick mark from each end of the board. Then I use a square to mark a line on each tick mark. I use a pair of dividers to lay out the tails evenly. In this case, I try to adjust the dividers until I can take two steps between the lines because I want two tails and however far past the line I go is the size of my pin. I push the dividers into the wood from both lines. This method for laying out tails certainly isn't necessary. You can just eyeball the placement. But this method allows for consistently spaced tails, especially if you have more than two or three tails. You can watch my detailed video on this method to lay out tails if you want to learn more. Then I take the square again and draw lines across each of the two divider points. Now I take a sliding bevel square to extend the angled lines. Contrary to popular belief, the angle doesn't have to be a specific number. Just use an angle that looks good to you and isn't too vertical or overly angled. <laughs> 
Again, I use a fine pencil to draw these lines so that my cutting can be more accurate. And if my square is hanging out over the edge of the board too much, I flip it around so it'll have more support. And I make a little tick mark when the square obscures my view on the top of the board. I then mark my waist so I don't accidentally saw into my tails. If you're a beginner, I would recommend that you also extend these lines on the back of your board. It'll aid you in making a more accurate saw cut. Here you can see the tail layout on both sides of the board. Before sawing the tails with a dovetail saw, I'd recommend that you check out my video on cutting accurately with a dovetail saw. The first thing I do is use my dovetail saw to cut in the waist area and right up next to the line. I try to leave just the pencil line and no more. But if you're having a hard time cutting right next to the pencil line, then just cut a little further into the waist. In a future step, you can use a chisel to get right up to the line. It'll take longer, but may make this step easier for you initially. It really doesn't matter which lines you cut first, but I find it easier to cut the lines that have the same angle first so my muscle memory will be more accurate. Just be careful to watch your lines all the time, including your baseline, so you don't cut over it. I'm right-handed, so it's a little more awkward for me to cut the angles where I have to twist my wrist to the left, but muscle memory soon kicks in and it becomes easier. You can see here how my saw cut is right up against the lines. I have left the lines and no more. Now I grab a coping saw to cut out the waste wood. I bring the saw blade about halfway down the joint and then I start sawing in the kerf. As I'm sawing, I slowly turn the saw inward toward the waist. I saw down close to the baseline, but I'm careful to not hit the baseline. This can also be done with a chisel, but I find the coping saw method to be faster. To cut the half pin waist off, I first set the chisel into the marking gauge line with the bevel toward the waist. I push down somewhat hard or take a couple of light taps on the chisel with a mallet. Then I turn the chisel at an angle and cut out a little notch like this. This little notch will make it easier for my hand saw to track and not cut into the shoulder. I then use a back saw with cross cut teeth to cut off the waist piece. If you've only got a dovetail saw with rip teeth, that's all right too, because the teeth are so small, so you won't notice a big difference. And cut the waist piece off of both sides. Now I use a chisel to clean up the tails. I make sure that the chisel is a bit narrower than the base of my tails. I don't cut right up to the baseline yet, otherwise it'll push all that waste past my baseline. I try to remove about half of the waste, and then if it's possible, I try to remove half of the waist again. Once the remaining waist gets to be quite small, then I drop my chisel right into the marking gauge line. I take a couple of light taps, and then I tip the chisel at a slight angle and use a wooden mallet to chop down to about halfway through the board. This angled undercut will make a slight valley so I don't have waste in the way when I'm fitting the joint together. I then repeat the same process on the other side of the board. Again, I place the chisel at the halfway point of the waist and I use a mallet to chop about halfway through the thickness of the board. Then if I can remove half of the waist again, I'll do it. If not, I'll put the chisel right in the baseline. And again, leaning the chisel at a slight angle, I chop downward to go halfway into the board. Then I use the chisel to clean out the gunk in the joint. 
you can see a slight valley that I created when I undercut with the chisel. If you've cut further away from the pencil line than I have here, now is a good time to use a chisel to remove the wood up to the line. Just make sure you leave your pencil line and no more. Now that my tailboard is finished, I'll trace the pattern of the tails onto the pin board. To make this easier, I take a hand plane or mallet and use it to set the height of my board while I secure it in the vise. I try to get the board to be flush with the hand plane. Then I move the hand plane backward to support the tailboard. Now for a cool little trick. I grab a flashlight and set it under the joint like this. And I grab something like a square or chisel to align the two boards together. I also move the tailboard back and forth until I can see light between the two boards, but not direct light, just opaque light through the wood fibers. Once the boards are lined up, I use a sharp and thin marking knife to trace the tails onto the end grain of the pin board. Rather than pushing down hard, I take a few light passes with the knife so it doesn't jump around. The quality of fit of your joint really depends on how careful you are in this step. Here you can see why it's good to have a thin marking knife, especially if you want more narrow pins like this. I usually have my students start off with wider pins because it's a bit challenging to get the knife into a narrow pin slot like this. After I remove my tailboard, it's a bit tough to see the knife lines and they also follow the slight imperfection of my tails. So I use a wider chisel to deepen these lines. And like before, I put the bevel into the waist area. Otherwise, the bevel will prevent me from getting straight pins. I'm careful to not push too hard because the board can split quite easily while doing this. Then to make my lines even more visible, I use a fine tipped pencil to darken these chisel lines but make darn sure that you mark the waist on the correct spots because I'll occasionally get a student who marks it wrong and they saw the wrong part of the joint. I take a square and extend the line straight down the face of the board. And like before, new students can extend these lines on both sides of the board to aid them in cutting more accurately. Now I pick up the dovetail saw again and saw next to the pencil lines, like before. Only this time I don't tilt the saw at an angle. I just rotate my saw in a different way and cut straight down the board. But as long as you're watching your layout lines and cut right next to them, your cut will look great. Like before, I use a coping saw to remove the waste from the pin board, but this time there are bigger pieces to remove. And remember, like before, just get close to the baseline, but not too close. And I can turn the saw around and get the last little bit out of the corner. Now I turn to using a chisel to chop out the remaining waste. I also like to start with the board in this configuration, which will make more sense in a minute. And like before, I try to remove half of the waist until I'm really close to the baseline. Again, I lean the chisel back slightly and make an undercut to about halfway through the board. Then I flip the board over to the other side. That requires an extra little step. I do everything the same as on the first side, but this time when I get down to the baseline, I take a couple of taps with the chisel. And then I not only lean the chisel back to make an undercut, but I also tilt the chisel slightly to the side to avoid chopping down into the pins. <laughs> 
It's a little awkward at first, but it eventually gets easier. Once the chopping is finished, I use a smaller chisel to clean up the gunk inside the joint. Again, I try to remove all the wood up to the pencil lines, but I try not to go over the pencil lines. You can also use a larger chisel to pare the rough sides of the pins and half pins down to the pencil lines. Just be careful not to blow out the back side. Now I try a test fit. I do this with my hand so I don't force a joint together that is too tight. Most of the time I'm able to get the joint to fit together on the first try, but occasionally I'll have to pull the joint apart and look for more gunk that needs to be removed. You can usually see burnished spots where the joint was rubbing hard on the really tight spots. So I remove a little bit of wood from these spots, but I'm careful to not remove too much before I test fit again because I will almost always get gaps if I take off too much. At this point, I'm pretty confident that I've removed all of the extra waste and I didn't see the joint splitting on the first fit, so I feel better about using a rubber mallet to lightly tap the joint together. My hand gets a little sore smacking the joints together. And here you can see how nicely this joint fits together with no gaps. The pins and tails protrude a hair because in the beginning I intentionally set the marking gauge a hair longer than the thickness of the board. This makes it much easier to just hand plane down the end grain of the pins and tails. And after a little hand planing, the joint looks really great. So that's how I cut dovetails with hand tools. If you found this video to be helpful or interesting, please subscribe to my channel below and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. If you have any questions or you want to share some of your own tips on dovetailing, I'd love that. Please do so below this video. And while you're down there, I'd be grateful if you give this video a little thumbs up. It only takes you a second and it really helps me out a lot. So I'll see you next time here in my shop. Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth. If you like this video, I've got a whole bunch of other free woodworking videos and articles at my website, which you can visit by clicking right here. You'll go to woodandshop.com. Down here, if you click, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And over here are some uh, really great other videos that I think you might like to check out.